Hey guys, it's Bub here, and this viewer taking a look at yet another viewer recommended OS. This is Atom OS 11 24H2, which like recent OS builds that we've taken a look at, promises a very compact and very lightweight version of Windows 11 24H2. We've actually never taken a look at Atom OS before, but I believe we've taken a look at other projects that were made by this developer. Um, this developer does have their name in the actual installation, I can't remember it off the top of my head. Uh, but once we get there, we'll make sure to give them their credit. Project Chloride. Yep, there it is. I do believe taking a look at their builds before. One thing I immediately find interesting, remember, we're just, we just booted off the live ISO, like we're not installed yet, is that the background is actually Windows PE. Like, let's minimize setup for a second. I mean, we can use this PC. I mean, what is this? I'm assuming this is Windows 10. Yeah, Windows 10 pre-installation environment 2018 RS5. So, I mean, we have all kinds of different tests on here, which is actually really convenient. I wish Microsoft would do something like this, but it would really increase their ISO size. And then we have the Windows setup with the Windows 11 background. I actually do like that touch. It is actually really nice. It looks good. Then we click Install Now. It goes full screen. But we can still get to our Start menu, and we can still screw around with the actual OS. Uh, we don't have a product key, so we're going to click Skip, Accept, Next, Custom. The one thing I notice is that the window borders are arrow again, which is something I actually haven't seen in quite a long time uh, from Microsoft. So we're going to delete all the partitions and click next. And here we go. We are installing Atom OS. All right, and here we are inside of Atom OS 24H2. Uh, the only thing I've done so far is I have installed VMware tools just so you guys get a little bit of a better viewing experience. Uh, but the one thing I noticed that I really don't like already is that it came out of the install there's no out-of-box experience. It automatically created a user named admin for us, no password, just logged us straight in. So that's one thing I don't like. We don't get that level of customization that the out-of-box experience provides for us. On the desktop, we do have some files I do want to take a look at, including the post install folder, um, where we can go through these. We have folder one processes, uh, where we can apply all. I actually have no idea what these do. Um, you can take a look here at this script if you care. Uh, chloride processes lower services and HDD users with a note that where is the note go use apply all then come back here and enable sysmain if you have a hard drive pretty cool okay we then have tools which are you know restore point when util when error tweaker auto runs and some advanced things we have tweaks like debloat CPU uh, for AMD or Intel but I don't know what this actually does oh it sets some things okay I see what that does now GPU things, uh, RAM optimizations, I mean, I don't even know, what what does this do? Compression for different RAM amounts. We have USB settings, we have tweaks for input delay, and we have a game booster script that will delete temporary files. We then have revert, which appears, I'm assuming, will bring back functionality uh, that was taken away. Like, you see, we don't have the win search bar, but if we ran this, I'm sure it will do registry keys that will bring back the search bar. In other, we have installers for like Brave, Chrome, Firefox, uh, and two RAR files because there is actually no Edge or no web browser pre installed. So I do like that they include an installer that you can, you know, install it because typically you would have to go to an FTP server or bring a USB over. We then have chloride wallpapers, so we do have a few options to pick from here. Um, I can't scroll through them because it opened in paint. And we have Project Chloride, which is the links to the developer's Discord website and YouTube channel. Over here we have Compact, which, let's see, it opens up other stuff. Uh, we'll appear to compact the drive, uh, Windows, Program Files, Program Files, and Program Data. We'll definitely take a look at that. And then Delete Temporary Files, which will obviously delete temporary files. On the taskbar, we have no widgets, we have no search, we have no nothing. We can only see uh, our tray as well as the start menu. But we do have the option to bring back task view, which does not appear to work. And then we have bring back the search button, which does appear to work. We can actually search for things. And it does include the internet. So that is something that is still there. I don't know why what that script we saw does. In the start menu, we have two things pinned by default. We have settings and file explorer. And then we have an all apps file explorer, game bar, get started, Microsoft store, notepad, paint, settings, terminal, windows, backup, windows, tools, winrar, which is an interesting choice, and Xbox. 
it seemed like whoever made this is into gaming because game bar and xbox are two things i would consider bloatware personally uh, especially on well i don't actually know what edition of windows this is we'll find out but especially if it's windows pro those two should not be included and winrar i don't know i would prefer that my clean iso actually truly be clean and not come with winrar the built-in archive tool should be fine especially with the one that came with 24h2 Speaking of the version, let's take a look here and see that we are using Windows 11 Pro 24H2. Uh, the ISO appears to be have compiled on the 15th of November 2024, because as you can see it's the 24th of November, so that is actually very wrong. Build 26100.2314. Uh, it appears like Windows Update is not an option, um, and even here if we click Windows Update, uh, it will not let us pull updates. Let's take a look at our actual CPU, RAM, and disk usage. We're using 56.3 of 59.8 gigs. That means we have 3.5 gigabytes of disk space used, which is not bad at all. Uh, that might be very similar to Tiny11, or, well, actually it might be better than Tiny11. I, I can't remember exactly what we had. In processes, we are using, let's see, 20, 10, anywhere from zero to 10% of our CPU. Typical Windows CPU utilization always bouncing up and down. Uh, and then we have 1.2 of 2 gigs of RAM used. So really not bad in terms of performance. We are actually doing pretty good compared to other custom ISOs. So that being said, this was a brief overview of Atom OS 1124H2. Definitely let me know what you think in the comments below. Uh, and recommend other ISOs you want me to take a look at because I am open to taking a look at any custom ISO as long as you know it's functional. So that being said, thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, make sure to drop a like and subscribe if you're new around here as we do all kinds of different technology videos, including device restorations. With that being said, I'll see you all in the next one.